Chicago. <laughs> um, one of these journalism majors from Ball State. Trying to get her out of that. I teach journalism, so I'm okay. You cannot. Uh, now she's trying to work, hone her long-form writing skills. She's also in a class with Second City because she's trying to be funny as well. That will not happen tonight. There will be no laughing tonight. Uh, been working in news journalism for more than three years, um, and she is working on long-form stuff. This is one of those long-form pieces that we're going to do something with, and it's called Humble Beginnings, and it's about uh, the journey of a student or a person, a kid, from one of Chicago's toughest neighborhoods. She's going to tell you a story from that. Sarah Jansen telling Humble Beginnings. So uh, this story is not my own, but one that I thought was important to tell. And it's about Terrence Beals, who uh, also went to Ball State and who I met while at Ball State and kind of reconnected with afterward. And heard his story, and so I'm going to share a small part of that tonight. <coughs> um, Terrence, growing up, described himself as a nerd. He focused a lot of his attention on school because um, he was one of those students who hung around after class just to have a conversation with the teacher. He was overly involved in sports and extracurricular activities because he knew that if he wasn't active, that's how he would be at risk to fall into the circumstances of his neighborhood. <coughs> Terrence was born and raised in Austin, which is a neighborhood on the far west side of Chicago. And of its 77 neighborhoods, it's the 14th most violent. In the 30 days from June 1st to July 1st, Austin saw six homicides occur within its seven square miles. Uh, after the eighth grade, Terrence wanted to attend Crane Technical Prep High School, believing that it would offer an advanced math and science curriculum that would give him an edge after high school. But what he found when he got there was that his interest and focus in school set him apart from his classmates, many of whom didn't even bother showing up. Focusing on school meant for Terrence losing some of the friends that he had grown up with as his interest was on getting good grades and theirs turned to drugs and gangs. how they tore down and infested the community. But many people don't say anything because that's your cousin or that's your friend. One day when he was walking home from school, uh, a guy called out to him and just totally stopped him cold. Because um, Terrence knew that often when you were walking home from school, you students would get beaten or robbed for no reason at all. The guy asked him who he was and what he was doing around there and told him that he didn't belong there. Then LB, a childhood friend of Terrence's, waved him along and said to the guy and the others in their group that Terrence wasn't anyone to worry about because he spends most of his time studying anyway. He said that a lot of people had a respect for you when you made school a priority because even in his neighborhood, there was a class system that put nerds at the top, followed by the athletes, and then the drug dealers and the gangbangers. He said it was like, it was like people looked up to you, and when you were trying to make it out of the neighborhood, they weren't gonna do anything to stand in your way. For Terrence, school had always been an outlet so he knew that his path out of his neighborhood involved college, and he wanted to go somewhere to study computers that was far enough away from the violence of his neighborhood, but close enough that he'd be able to return from time to time. So tuition at Ball State 
was the most manageable of his choices, thanks to an academic scholarship that he received from the university, as well as a couple others that he'd applied for. So the summer before his freshman year at Ball State, he spent about two weeks on campus just getting to know the school and seeing what it was like to be a student there. And that's when he started to notice differences between himself and his classmates. And unlike at Crane, it wasn't just his interest in school that set him apart. At Crane, and like Terrence, nearly 100% of the students that he went to high school with were black. And the small percentage who weren't were either Hispanic or mixed race. So until that summer at Ball State, Terrence had never sat next to a white student in class. And the differences weren't just physical and weren't just about the way he talked and the Chicago slang that he used. His academic placement tests revealed that Terrence, that Crane had left Terrence completely unprepared for college. In his junior year, 88% of the 11th graders at Crane did not, were, were deemed unfit for college based on their ACT scores, which in Illinois is the major test used for college entrance. So despite all of his hard work and his good grades, Terrence would require one year of remedial classes before he would even be able to start freshman level classes at Ball State. He said that he wasn't mad at himself, he was mad at Chicago, because in two months he went from the top to the bottom.